Hey, let me guess. You're trying to pick an embedding model for your RAG app, but you just don't know how to choose the model. OpenAI is expensive, but reliable. Open source models are free, but are they any good? And what's the catch? Today, I'll show you exactly how these models perform head to head, and the results might surprise you. And spoiler alert, some open source models are performing within 10% of OpenAI's state of the art, and they are completely free. Before we dive into the results, let's talk about why choosing an embedding model is such a headache. You're probably dealing with all these problems building your own AI RAG app. You're trying to balance time, cost, and quality. You're manually setting up infrastructure for each model. You're spinning up your own bespoke evaluation pipelines and methodology. And during all this, you're investing weeks of engineering time, which you don't have. As a result, most teams just default to OpenAI because seriously, nobody's got time for that. This is where PGAI Vectorizer comes in. It's one open source tool built right into Postgres that works with many closed and open source embedding models. It handles everything automatically for you. It automatically creates and updates embeddings when data changes. It works with OpenAI and many open source models such as Nomic and BGE. And new models are added on a regular basis too. It handles text chunking with a myriad of options such as basic fixed size chunking, recursive chunking, and many other formatting options to add additional context to further boost your RAG accuracy. It also creates ready to query views so you can query the generated embeddings directly in that view. You can double check the chunks and embeddings at every step of your evaluation pipeline. And the extra bonus, it's open source, so it's free to use and you can request and submit changes anytime. Okay, okay, enough of me talking. Let me just show you how easy creating embeddings and testing becomes. With just one SQL command that you see here, we can create a vectorizer for any model. You can create multiple vectorizers at once, each using a different model that you want to evaluate, like OpenAI, BGE, Nomic, and more. I'm only creating the OpenAI's text embedding three small with 768 dimensions as an example. The vectorizer handles all complexity of creating and managing embeddings for each model. We offer a myriad of chunking and formatting options, such as basic chunking, recursive, specifying the max number of characters per chunk, how many characters to overlap, additional context to add, such as the title of the essay, and many more. I will share the PGA vectorizer's API documentation at the end of this video, so don't worry about taking notes. I got you. Now here's where things get very interesting and maybe even a bit philosophical. And I know you didn't think that you'd be pondering the nature of understanding and meaning in a video about evals, did you? But yeah, we're going to be asking some deep questions. Can these models really grasp what they're reading or are they just really good at pattern matching? Let's look at this text chunk from Paul Graham. Cambridge's main industry is ideas. New York's is finance. Silicon Valley's is startups. The real question is, can these models truly understand different ways of asking about the same information? So what we did is we had GPT-40 mini generate questions like the following for each text chunk. What industry is Cambridge known for? Which is a short question. How does the economical focus of New York on finance shape opportunities compared to Cambridge? This is a detailed question. What does the comparison suggest about different economic focuses? This is a context-based question. And essentially, we are testing how different embedding models handle different ways of asking the same information. Our hypothesis is that by taking text chunks and generating different types of questions about them, we can see if these models understand not just exact matches, but also the meaning and context of the questions, which is more typical to how humans ask questions. For our comparison, we're testing four popular embedding models, two from the open source world and two from OpenAI. We're starting with OpenAI's latest large model with 1,536 dimensions and their small model with 768 dimensions. And on the open source end, we chose Beijing Academy of AI's BGE Large with 1,024 dimensions and Nomix Embedding Model with 768 dimensions. These four models were chosen because they represent the most popular closed source and open source options and for embeddings in small and large sizes. OpenAI's models are obviously the most widely used and are considered the gold standard, while BGE Large and Nomix Embedding Text are considered the leading open source alternatives that can be run locally on your machine. Based on our hypothesis, we asked this question. How well can each model find relevant text based on different types of questions? This is how it works. We first randomly select 20 text chunks from our data set. After chunking and embedding Paul Graham's essays, we had about 8,000 chunks. So we chose 20 chunks out of the 8,000 randomly. Then for each chunk, we generated five types of questions, four questions per type for a total of 20 questions per chunk. The five types of questions are the following. Short questions, which are under 10 words for testing basic comprehension, long questions for detailed analysis, direct questions about explicit content, implied questions that require contextual understanding, and finally, questions that are intentionally vague. The scoring is also very simple. Can the model find the original text chunk in its top results? 
It's just a simple yes or no question. Then we tally up these results and compare them against each model. Now, let's walk you through the code and show you how we are evaluating the different models and their accuracy. And by the way, all the code and docs will be linked at the description of this video. Now, let's head over to line 86 and we'll show you how the eval is configured. Here, we test 20 random chunks and then we generate 20 questions per chunk. We're gonna be comparing four different models for each chunk. We generate five different types of questions. Let's go back to the main function where all the logic gets executed. The main section is broken down to three primary steps. In the first step, we get 20 text chunks from Paul Graham's essays. Then we generate 20 questions per chunk. And finally, we run the evaluation across the four models and all the results get saved. You'll also notice that at each step, we save the results to their respective CSVs. The intention here is that you can run each step independently and you don't have to rerun the entire main function. Okay, let's dive into each step. In step one, we get 20 random chunks. We connect to our PostgreSQL database running on Docker. This database contains Paul Graham's essays, which have already been broken down into smaller chunks and embedded using PGAI Vectorizer. It then randomly picks 20 chunks to work with, and you can change this value by changing the num chunks value on the config above. Back to our main function, step two is where things get very interesting. For each chunk, we then use gpt 4 mini to generate the test question. Let's dive into the generate questions function. For each chunk of text, it asks gpt 4 to create 20 different questions. As you can see, we have a system prompt that tells it to generate the type of questions we have defined here. These aren't just random questions. They're distributed across five different types, short, long, direct, implied, and vague ones. After we generate the questions, we're at the actual evaluation step. So let's go back to the main function. Finally, after picking the chunks and generating questions for each chunk, we can run the evaluation. This evaluate models function takes each question and runs it through the four embedding models right here, which we've also defined in the config. And you can change this yourself. Each model then tries to match the questions back to the text chunks using this vector search function. The code then keeps track of whether each model successfully finds the right chunk in its top 10 results. Also, what makes this evaluation thorough is that it's not just looking at overall success rates, but also breaks down how well each model performs with different types of questions. This helps us identify if certain models are better at handling specific types of questions. All the results get saved to the CSV file so you can analyze them later. You get to see not just which model performed best overall, but also which one excelled at specific parts of the question. The code is built to be reproducible. You can run it multiple times, and because it saves all the generated chunks and questions into their own files, you can rerun parts of the evaluation by commenting things out. This saves you a lot of time. The results are fascinating, although maybe not too surprising for many. OpenAI's large model hit 80.5% accuracy, which is the highest. Their small model reached 75.8%. BGE Large achieves 71.5% and Nomic achieves 71%. And here's what's really interesting. All models handled detailed questions surprisingly or maybe unsurprisingly well. Even the open source ones hit 90% accuracy when given enough context. The biggest difference, however, shows up when context-based questions come up. OpenAI's large model reached 88.8% .8 while others stayed around 75 to 78%. Those extra dimensions seem to really help capture those subtle relationships. And the vague questions, every single model struggled. Only hidden 42 to 57%. But honestly, even humans struggle with vague questions. Maybe even worse, because I know I struggle with extremely vague questions as well. So after hearing me yap for 10 minutes, how do you choose? Here are the key factors that I think are most important. The type of data and your chunking strategy matters a lot. Garbage in and garbage comes out. Consider how your users actually search and ask questions. Do they tend to ask short, vague questions or long, detailed ones? Based on this, you can define your must-have accuracy requirements. You also need to know your cost constraints. For our test data set of 215 essays from Paul Graham, OpenAI's small model costs about $0.03, cents and the large model costs $0.15. Cents. The open source models are obviously free. But the free comes with a big asterisk. You really need to understand your compute. While open source models are free to use, you need to bring your own hardware. And better hardware will be faster at embedding, but cost more. Lower end hardware is cheaper, but will take longer. This is something very important to consider. Here are my recommendations. If you need that extra 9% accuracy, handle lots of context-heavy queries, or you don't have powerful GPUs, go with OpenAI's models. 
If you're cost conscious and need local deployment and speed doesn't matter, open source models are a great choice. And obviously remember, test with your own data. This is very important. These results are just a starting point and that's exactly why we're providing all the code and evaluation scripts in our GitHub repo. You can take these tools, run them against your own data and make an informed decision yourself based on real world performance in your specific use case. Check out the links in the description for the complete evaluation code, ready to use Docker setup, step-by-step -step instructions, and the detailed blog post. The whole point of this video and blog post is to give you the tools to run these evals yourself. So you don't have to guess which models work best. You can know for sure on your own data and your own use case. Let me know in the comments which models you end up testing and the results that you find.